Hey! Oh, hey, how you doing? It's Henry at Mowers and Mowers. Good morning. Today is the day. I've got my blue bayou out, first time since the snowstorms. I've got my newly painted um, utility rack that I got off of Jamal Alatet. I'm sorry, uh, Rodimus Prime. I'm getting confused by all the names that I have for my tractors and also the Husqvarna roof that I painted yesterday with really lousy paint. But you know what? I'm gonna put a couple of Lucas oil stickers here. Do my part in marketing, you know? Anyway, check it out. Came out pretty good. This not so much, but like I said, it's the roof. You know what I mean? <clears throat> as long as I have the rear valance over here pretty well covered. This is the bracket that's supposed to attach to it. And while I was thinking about it last night, how am I going to get a rear rack to be placed in the back of this along with that? How am I going to do it? As you can see, the gas tank is in the rear here also. And the uh, reservoir for the fuel is here too. So it's going to be kind of a challenge for me to fabricate a way to put both of those things on the rear. Might have to rethink things. So you see what I mean here? So of course this is made for the Rodimus Prime, right? So it's not going to match. As a matter of fact, it doesn't, see? I'm going to have to cut like the middle parts of these um, grates away so it'll fit the um, so it'll fit these springs there see because when you put this down this this bracket gets in the way so I have to I have to cut a little bit of that that looks pretty good actually doesn't it yeah that looks pretty good I like it there was also a thought of me putting it in the front on the hood you know like some ATVs have but honestly, this is so wide that it wouldn't look right. Yeah, because this is so narrow, it doesn't look right. I mean, I guess it's okay, but um, it's too wide. It doesn't look as good as the back. So if you look at this roof, it actually disconnects over here, so I wouldn't have to lift this heavy part yet and uh, be able to try to fit this bracket onto there. So I'm going to first take this apart first so that there's not so much weight of me trying to hold it there to see how it's going to fit. So I'm going to um, disconnect the heavy part of the roof, try to fabricate the uh, for, uh, bracket onto the tractor once I have it on there I could replace this back on there you know so I'm gonna remove this first and then uh, we'll get to it so I've got this bracket off and look the way this is made gets in the way of the springs for the seat as well as <laughs> this uh, gas fill cap is right there so this is gonna be tough fellas I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do this I almost feel like I need to I need to 86 this I need to get rid of this support right there and just basically place it like there somehow without these you know it's the only way unless I remove this one to clear that and still have one support there three support corners is better than none right uh, better than two so that's what I'm thinking I should try to do at the same time I need to probably cut this a little bit to accommodate the uh, the clearance in the spring here for the seats so I have to, I'm gonna stand here and think about it for a bit so what I figured out is I could actually lift up 
the spring a little and it'll go in between the springs, which works just fine. As long as this part goes in between the springs, the springs are sticking out. So that'll work. I wouldn't have to cut it, right? But if you look at the angle, the way this is designed for the Husqvarna, this part here went into a ditch, you know, so that it's lower. When this is lower, this angle will be more perpendicular, you know? Right now it's kind of faced backwards, so it, it would need to be bent like that so it's a little bit more um, up. I don't think I can get around cutting this. I think that I have to do that. I have to get rid of this support because this is damn smack right in the middle of the uh, fuel uh, fuel filler, you know? So I'd have to cut this support off right there. So I wouldn't have that. I may have to bend this like um, 35, 45 degrees like that, you know? Not 90 degrees, 45 degrees. I'm gonna bang this one so that it goes out like that, so that it coincides with this. This part here is not gonna be able to hook onto here because the gas tank is there, see? Unless I lifted this up and slipped it through, but I'd have to cut this coping right there. So a little bit of fabrication for sure. Uh, not really looking forward to doing that because I'm afraid that I'm gonna go to a point where I can't repair it again. You know, if you cut too many things off, you can't really replace them in the same structural strength as it was designed. So I have to really think about it. And then I figured once this is on, I could put the uh, thing right over it, you know? So I wouldn't have to worry about first putting this on and having this fit. Put this on first, then make that fit, you know, on top of that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm here thinking about it and thinking about it and you know what, I'm just going to do it because if I stand here and think about it too long, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> so I'm just going to do it, damn it. Not the straightest cut, but it'll do. This thing I can't push forward because this thing, I need to actually bend this 45 degrees so that it'll coincide with this angle there. have the right angle that's that's not the work it's got to be like this is that even budging let me figure this out okay so i banged it to the right angle This part here it's at the right angle now but this thing is definitely in the way I might have to cut that and I'm just gonna put a couple of self tapping screws right in there to go in that way it won't go in too deep and uh, it should be fine same goes with this that's the easiest way to do it without having to drill holes in there where the gas tank is and then having to have to put another nut on the other end which is impossible to get to without removing the entire gas tank you know what I mean so I think I'm just gonna make it easy like that.
I'd have to cut part of the inside cage here. Get rid of that for this to fit at all. So I've got a dirty job now. I've got this box of uh, nuts and bolts, and I know I have some self-tapping screws, but I can't find them. So I'm just gonna dump all of them out. See if I can find some self-tapping screws. Self-tappers makes the job easy. Holy cow. Years and years worth of nuts and bolts that I've collected from tractors, lawnmower teardowns. I mean, this way I could I'd actually kind of get organized now, you know? So this is gonna take me a while to sort through this to find some self tappers. And then uh, I think we're in business, you know? I've been sitting here for about an hour and a half <laughs> sorting through all the stuff. And it basically looks exactly the same as before, but uh... <laughs> less dirt you know what i mean i also found a whole bunch of uh self tappers with uh, small washers and the little tiny screws that you would need you know the 516s the super quarter inch ones uh, the kinds for the magneto and the staters gotta stay true to my sponsor not to mention covers up the roof a little bit better gotta stick one of these massive stickers on here this is the back so I have to put it upside down. Yeah. I do it like this because I can see it. Now, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> Let's see how long this lasts. Uh, with the heat and stuff. It might adhere pretty well. Lucas Oil Marine products too. I really like the teal color.
So there you go. I figured out how to put this together. So I drilled a hole through this slot here. And I have like this bracket that I made that I drilled in there, right? And it's rubber coated over here with some stoppers. You just push that in there and I drilled a hole so you can just put a um, pin in there, just like that. So that holds this in place. And it, were, it turned out great. The self-tapping screws just made things so easy. I had to cut the uh, thing here so I can reach the gas cap. Smooth that out a little bit. One self-tapper in there, right, for support. Cut the middle part out of this cage so that everything fits right. Self-tapped it over there with a washer. Self-tapped it here with a washer. And honestly, the uh, utility rack is just for looks. You couldn't put anything in it anyway, anything substantial, because the seat is taking like more than 60% of this area there. I'm just, this thing here is, I don't know, it just looks good. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I guess I could put a cooler here or some tools or something like that, or maybe some straps, you know? Just give it, gives it a little bit more of a rugged look to it is all. But uh, man, I'm stoked because uh, I really like the, the hood, uh, not the hood, the uh, roof. There we go, that's it. And there's the blue bayou with a utility rack and a roof. Look at that, it's in the shade. Isn't that cool? I think that's pretty cool. Oh, let me explain why I had to do this. Why, why should it be removable? Well, you can't open the hood if it's not removable. So if you needed to remove the hood, you'd pull this out and put it over here, and that way you can open the hood. You know what I mean? Before, when I thought about just uh, you know, um, applying that onto here, I'm thinking to myself, well, if I make it permanent, how am I gonna ever open the hood, you know, to jump the battery or to turn the uh, uh, fuel um, shut off off, you know? So the hood had to be able to open. So to do just that and stuff it into there and to put a pin through it was the perfect way for me to uh, allow the front support posts to be able to move so I can get the hood open. You know what I mean? So I think that's pretty cool. I'm going to put some of this uh, wiring harness plastic sheathing over these metal bars. Give it that um, more um, finished look to it. Had this line around. Why not cover it up with some black plastic? So this was a project that I wanted to do for the longest time. You know, just never had had a t uh, a good time to do it because I was always in the middle of projects. You know, but uh, I'm a little burned out to be honest with you. Lots of push mowers, lots of projects on a daily basis. So. Uh, I'm going to take the weekend off as I usually do now. Uh, maybe you may not see five videos a week anymore. Maybe I'll do a review or something like that. But uh, I'm stoked. Love that utility rack on there. And I love the thought process of trying to get it to fit and the easiest way to get it on there. You know what I mean? Without damaging the fuel tank underneath. And at the same time, to have access to the fuel cap to be able to take it off. And for this to be at least supported in three points pretty good you know what I mean I'm not gonna use this thing in a tornado or a hurricane or something like that it's not gonna blow away it's on there pretty well also to make the front post support uh, movable so I can open the hood <laughs> it's great I, I really like it um, I guess I'm never gonna sell the blue Bayou ever <laughs> you know what I mean but uh, thanks a lot for joining me on today's episode we'll see you guys next time on mowers and blowers next time on mowers and blowers <laughs> hey if you guys enjoyed the video remember to give me a like also comment below subscribe remember it doesn't cost anything to subscribe it's free right also hit that little bell
That way you'll get post notifications whenever there's a new video and you won't miss out on any of them. Remember to follow my Instagram and Facebook as well as if you'd like to donate a dollar or two, paypal.me slash mowers and blowers. Really appreciate all the support. Also, to keep the videos coming every day, support the channel. Bye.